What's going on wrestling family? Welcome back to Hear These Thoughts. This video is called 10 Wrestlers Who Proved Naysayers Wrong. And I can't wait to see who's on this list. Hopefully some of the people that I was backing is on this list that got pretty big in WWE. I don't know. I'm not going to say I told you so, but I will. But anyways, before we get started, hit the subscribe button. Lego. Handsome, intelligent, virile. Oh wait, no, that's just me. We can also be very judgmental, making our minds up about things before we've seen the full picture. Mm -hmm. The following performers all have their doubters at one stage or another, but through tireless work and dedication, with the occasional good break here and there, were able to overcome the negativity, succeed and become stars. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 wrestlers who proved the naysayers wrong. Join us. Number 10, Dominic Mysterio. Facts. After yeah, first for appearing sure. appearing on WWE TV as the spiky-haired object of a custody battle, Dominic Mysterio became a regular part of the show in 2020 during Rey Mysterio's feud with Seth Rollins. This led to his debut match with the Monday Night Messiah at SummerSlam, a short run with the Tag Team Championships, and a part in Logan Paul's debut at WrestleMania 38. Logan that night was teaming with his father, The Miz. I think that's right. Despite all these high profile moments, fans did not take kindly to the second generation star. Mm -hmm. Well, that was until he turned heel and joined up with the Judgment Day. Ever since he took out Ray and Edge at Clash at the Castle and developed a completely psychologically healthy relationship with Rhea Ripley, Dom has completely transformed. He is way more effective as a sniveling heel than he ever was as a good guy and is now one of the most reliably entertaining performers every single goddamn week. Completely throwing himself into the role, he has quite shockingly become one of WWE's best bad guys and his star is only set to grow going forward. Papa Eddie must be watching and smiling up in heaven. Yep. Number nine? Hey, guys, like just really quick, um, if you would have told me when Dominic Mysterio first came to WWE, that by turning heel, he would have been one of, if not the biggest heels in WWE. I would have never predicted that. Now, I knew a heel turn would help because typically for a lot of people, heel turns are pretty much like the last situation, you know, in case of emergency break glass. Some people it don't work for. Look at Hit Row. They turn heel. Doesn't even matter. People still don't care. But with Dominic, when he turned heel, I was like, okay, it, it's interesting, but we'll see what happened. But for him... To take that people will hate him because of nepotism due to his father, which is the only reason why people believe that he's in WWE, and use that as fuel as a heel, and take everything that people make jokes about him, embrace it, and just throw it back in their faces, even whether it be the comparisons to Eddie Guerrero, whatever the case may be, it's amazing what this all turned into. It's amazing how he propelled his career at this point. I don't know anyone else who gets crazier bulls than Dominic Mysterio right now. And there are, there are heels all over WWE that's been there for a long time that probably hasn't had that much bulls in their entire career. This is crazy. Who would have known? I never knew. I'm not going to lie. He got me. Braun Strowman. In 2015, WWE took a page out of Itchy and Scratchy's book and decided that the way to what? revitalize the Wyatt family was to add a new character. Instead of a rapping dog, though, fans were faced with a beta version of Braun Strowman. Less than a year after his first ever wrestling match, Strowman was dumped onto TV as the newest member of the Backwards Cult. He was nicknamed the Black Sheep, although his moniker should have been the Deer in Headlights. Strowman looked <laughs> totally out of place, and to be fair, can you really blame the guy? Here he was, mere months into his WWE career, pushed to a level that he just wasn't ready for. Luckily for him, wrestling fans are famously forgiving and were willing to let him find his feet. <laughs> no, <they> no <laughs> crowds dumped on Strowman from a great height, taking a sadistic pleasure in his lumbering appearance and total lack of skill. All that changed in 2016, though, when a newer, more confident version of Strowman appeared on Raw and started munching through jobbers like they were on special offer. Sorry we ever booed you, Mr. Strowman. Please don't eat me. Number eight. Dude, eight. I, used to, I used to crack up when they had Braun Strowman come in and take local competitors, beat them up, stack them on top of each other, and then pin them like that. Like, <laughs> how do you stack people on top of each other like a triple cheeseburger and then do CPR in a pin? I've never seen that before, and it was always hilarious. But, you know, I never had any hard feelings about Braun Strowman. I honestly didn't care that much about Braun Strowman. I just focused on the Wyatt family because, like, you know, uh, Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper was, like, one of my favorites out of the group. Um, Bray Wyatt, I love Bray Wyatt, as everyone else did, of course. 
but I always watched Luke Harper. You know, I went crazy when I saw him personally at a live event. That was fun. But um, yeah, I didn't have too much thought about Braun Strowman. So I didn't know too much about the hate of him, except for the time that he had like that split screen a promo between him. And I forgot who he was having a promo against. You guys let me know in the comment section. He forgot his lines and people started making fun of him. And that's the only thing I saw. But anyways, I'm oblivious to a lot of that stuff. A Styles. From the closure of WCW until the 2016 Royal Rumble, one man who helped carry wrestling outside of WWE yeah. on his back was AJ Styles. Whether there was naysayers TNA, for him? New Japan or Ring of Honor, the phenomenal one wowed audiences with his flashy moveset, freakish agility, and adorable little face. Oh, look at it. Such a cutie. <laughs> At the aforementioned Royal Rumble event, fans got a moment almost 20 years in the making when Styles strode out to a WWE stage for the first time ever. It would have been nice to actually see this moment, but Kevin Dunn clearly thought Roman Reigns' stupid, although admittedly handsome mug was more important. However, as soon as Styles rocked up in WWE, fans got worried. Vince McMahon had a long history of burying so-called outside talent, and long-time oh, yeah. admirers were afraid that the same would happen to their boy. However, those naysayers were proved wrong, because by the time 2016 was done, Styles had beaten John Cena twice and was the WWE champ. Even better, WWE have continued to treat AJ like a big deal since, finally snapping the curse that had affected so many other so-called indie darlings. Number seven. Okay, I hate to be that person. I know I stopped this video a lot. I'm sorry, guys. I hate to be that person. But this is kind of a mix-up here because it's not that people were naysayers about AJ Styles. They were naysayers about Vince McMahon and his ability to book people. That's completely different than saying a wrestler's going to come in here and be garbage. Like they said about like Dominic Mysterio, this part, everybody, everybody knew who was conscious of everything happening in the wrestling world. Even if you knew even a little bit about the Bullet Club, you knew who AJ Styles was, you know, who Finn, Finn Balor was, and you knew who uh, Gallows and Anderson was. You at least knew those four people, but for sure you knew who AJ Styles was even back in the TNA days. And you knew he would be good in the ring, but no one doubted AJ Styles skill. No one doubted him on the mic. People doubted what Vince McMahon how he was going to book this guy coming into WWE. That's completely different than what the topic is. But hey, I love Kata Holly. Let's go. Sheamus. On June 30th, 2009, Sheamus made his debut on ECW, defeating an enhancement talent. On December 13th, 2009, Sheamus defeated John Cena at TLC to become WWE Champion. If you would like to file a claim for Whiplash, please call the number on screen now. <laughs> Vince McMahon That's a was good clearly one. in touch with his Irish heritage at this time because he booked Sheamus to look like an absolute monster. This was what WWE fans had been wanting for years, a fresh new star to shake up the dusty old main event scene. Sadly though, the company went for the wrong fresh new star. Seamus wasn't bad, he was just a bit bland. His character at the time boiled down to, I am Irish and I like to kick people, which is hardly what you look for in a top guy. It would take another decade or so until public opinion on the Celtic Warrior really started to turn. Thanks. Through a series of hard-hitting matches with Drew McIntyre, fans began to come around to Sheamus. One series of brutal battles with Gunter later, and they were practically worshipping at his feet. The luck of the Irish must be real, although it could have kicked in a little sooner. Number yeah, six. No, people, I, but I honestly feel like people turn to appreciate Sheamus way before that. In his matches with Cesaro, even when he tag teamed with Cesaro, like I think people turned and, and started to love, uh, I'm sorry, started to love Sheamus a long time ago. But it is funny that back then people hated him, but now people are like, why don't they give him an opportunity? They did back then, but it just was the wrong time for it to happen. And Adam Page. Moving away from WWE now, we find ourselves at AEW's All Out event from 2019. The final match of the night was a huge one, the battle to crown the first ever AEW World Champ. On one side was Chris Jericho, a veteran name with dozens of championship reigns in his back pocket. And on the other side was Hangman Adam Page, who was friends with the Young Bucks. Oh dear. Many oh yeah, thought I remember Page this. was pushed way too hard way too soon, and the fans mm -hmm. did not take kindly to it. Not only did it make the result of All Out thoroughly predictable, but it actually set Hangman's career back a good ways. And then came Kenny Omega. 
Through his outstanding long-term feud with the best bout machine, the anxious millennial cowboy managed to get across his personality and help fans resonate with his nervous, self-destructive character. By the time Full Gear 2021 came around, fans were threatening to riot if their new fave didn't beat Omega for the top prize. All this goes to show that if you give somebody a little bit of time and team them up with a bunch of weirdo ex-cult members, then they too <laughs> can soar. Number five, Diamond Dallas I'm still Page. not on the Adam Page it's him, train, it's though. Him, it's He's cool, no, but I'm not a huge fan. Before he was an in-ring competitor, Diamond Dallas Page was a successful manager for acts like Kurt Hennig, the fabulous Freebirds, and the young Scott Hall. In 1991, it seemed as if Page's managerial opportunities in WCW were drying up and that he may soon be let go. Instead of handing in his CV at the local supermarket, though, the 35-year-old Page made the utterly bonkers decision to learn how to wrestle. Just for context, Seth Rollins is 36 now. Against all the odds and the laws of biology, though. DDP not only completed his training, but would go on to have one of the most extraordinary careers in WCW history. He feuded with Randy Savage, Goldberg, Hulk Hogan, and many more on his way to winning 10 titles with the promotion, including three runs with the top prize. It's been said many times, but it bears repeating just how inspirational DDP's story is in showing that it is never too late to follow your dreams. That's a Number fact. four, The Miz. Hopping back to WWE That's a good one. now, and a man who has been with the company for almost two decades. God, time is relentless, isn't it? Mike it is. The Miz Mizanin was first introduced to WWE audiences as part of 2004's Million Dollar Tough Enough. Let's just gloss over when he made a total tit of himself whilst hosting the Diva Search and move on to his time as an actual in-ring competitor, eh? In the years that followed Tough Enough and that embarrassing moment, Miz has won just about everything there is to win in WWE. The WWE Championship, multiple IC and US Championships, a bunch of different tag belts, the Slammy for Best WWE.com Exclusive in 2008, all the big ones. He managed to achieve all of this despite constant bemoaning from fans, critics, and even fellow wrestlers. Yes, JBL, we mean you. <laughs> Whether you, you love it. him or hate him, there is no denying that Miz has made the very most of a wrestling career that began as a spot on reality TV. There Bet, is no man. chance that this man isn't going into the WWE Hall of Fame one day. And you know what? He more than deserves it. Number I three. Uh, the Miz, I'm not big on The Miz like that. But I do appreciate what he's done and what he's contributed and his story. I love his story on how he went from just believing himself from being on reality TV to ending up in WWE and headlining a WrestleMania. I love the entire story. I'm just not sold on Miz as a super fan, but I do love what he contributes to the company. And he is a, a workhorse. He's consistent. He stays healthy. I, I see his value when it comes to wrestling. I appreciate it. Again, y'all need to have him star in a biopic about Michael Cole. He needs to play him. They look alike. Okay. That's not racist stuff, that's just saying. Daniel Bryan. From The Miz to his ex-NXT rookie, <laughs> Daniel Bryan famously faced some pretty tough opposition in his time working for WWE. After kicking people to death for fun on the indies, Bryan Danielson made his proper WWE debut in 2010 as one of the NXT rookies. He was promptly fired for choking a man with a tie, but don't worry, they hired him back shortly thereafter. Brian was never earmarked for greatness in WWE. He was an outstanding wrestler, but didn't fit the mold of what a traditional top star in the company looked like. Mm -hmm. He was in a system that was working against him, but that system didn't count on one thing. Men from their 20s to 40s with too much time on their hands and access to the internet. <laughs> That's right, through an overwhelming groundswell of support from fans, WWE were forced to push Brian to the moon and give him the biggest win of his career at WrestleMania 30. The American Dragon had overcome all the odds and had solidified his place amongst the modern wrestling elites. Even if maybe that's not what WWE had in mind. Number two, John Cena. And one thing really quick about him, I, I know I keep stopping the video. We gotta give these guys the respect, especially the people the size of like a, a Brian Danielson or um, Rey Mysterio, which I, I know we do. But I'm just saying, just in general, wrestlers of their size, where people were looking down at them because they weren't these big, roided up wrestlers. Like the fact that they were able to make a, they trailblaze the the doors that they open for other people is fantastic, and they end up being amazing wrestlers. Could you imagine 
if people decided to ignore the audience, especially when it comes to uh, Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryant, and just ignore the crowd and just bury him, that we would have missed out on that. I, and, and it's crazy. And I think about other like timelines. And I'm like, I wonder if a different timeline they never got Daniel Bryant, who would have been the successor. Like, I wonder who would have been if, you know, Daniel Bryant or it wasn't Batista, who would it have been? And I can't think of anyone else who would have had a better story than De Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryant, whichever one you want to call him. But anyway. Cena. It's almost weird to think about now, but there was, of course, a time when John Cena was public enemy number one in the yep. eyes of wrestling fans. Yep, I was one of them. Not in the cool ECW mm -hmm. public enemy kind of way. <laughs> he was almost the total inverse of a Daniel Bryan. The company absolutely adored him, but lots of fans couldn't stand to watch him succeed. I'm not gonna lie, to it was fair, me. WWE did little to help Cena's case. They gave him win after win after win, often at the expense of more popular stars, and watered down his once edgy character to a collection of catchphrases and multicolored t shirts. Everyone was convinced that fans would hate John Cena for life until he started doing something called the United States Open Challenge. Suddenly, Big Match John was putting on pay-per-view quality matches every single week on Raw with some of the best talent around. Sure, he would still win, but this was the most interesting thing he had done in years. So there you have it. John Cena overcame the odds, never gave up, and got through the tough times with hustle, loyalty, and respect. Good God, the propaganda's deeper into my brain than I first thought. Number one, Roman Reigns. Take all the animosity fans felt towards John Cena for so long, apply it to Roman Reigns, and multiply it by about 100. As soon as WWE started to push the X-Shield member as a top star, fans called him out as Cena 2.0. In the wake of multiple attempts to get Roman over as the new blue-eyed babyface, literally look at those contact lenses, fans wholeheartedly rejected their new hero and many years of main event stories were ruined as a result. And then he went bad. Since coming back in the summer of 2020 as a heel, Roman's perception has undergone a total 180 degree flip. Thanks. As the callous, manipulating head of the bloodline, the tribal chief has evolved into one of the most compelling three-dimensional characters wrestling has ever seen, and fans have loved going on that journey. That's a fact. This, I think there's one lesson in all of this. Heel turns, heel careers, okay? That's what basically what he did. And for John Cena... I was one of the people who absolutely did not like him at all. I was one of those people who came from the Attitude Era. I was watching that. And it was like, who's going to be the next Rock? Who's going to be the next Stone Cold Steve Austin? And we hated him because he was nothing like The Rock. He was nothing like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He was this person that's trying to be a rapper. To me, he reminded me of the guy from Malibu's Most Wanted. Uh, I forgot what the actor's name that plays that character. B, his name, I think in the movie. Is his name B-Rab in the movie? His name is something else. Kennedy. Something Kennedy. But... He reminded me of that, and I never liked the thugaholic version of John Cena. I know most people liked it. I hated the spinner belt. That thing was disgusting, even though I liked spinning rims back in the day, but that belt just was just ugly. Just everything that they about him was disgusting, but once he started coming to the like loyalty respect, I actually liked that John Cena better than the previous versions of John Cena, and the fact that he kept winning over and over, and you could tell WWE was trying to force him down our throats. That's when people really hated him, and the same goes for Roman Reigns. They were trying to force him down our throats as well. Pause, but once he got a heel turn, like I said, heel turns, heel careers. Now, what you guys think? If there's anybody else that wasn't on this list, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate that. Salute. Peace. Have a good day.